Hello, I'm Clinton DeGenius and today we are going to be talking about bias variance trade-off in machine learning. Bias variance trade-off is a very important topic in machine learning and that is what we are going to discuss today. Um, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel. Just click on the subscribe button there and that will enable me to make better videos next time. So please subscribe now. Click on the subscribe button so that I make better videos for you. Alright, so presentation for this. You can print it out from this place. Kind of the genius. The blogspot.com or the HU. But this particular presentation, the link is in the description box, so you can just click to download the presentation and then you can read, you can print and follow along. Alright, so let's get started. What are we going to cover today? We are going to look at what is bias variance trade-off. We are going to look at sources of error in regression, bias variance decomposition of squared error, trade-off, minimizing the error the relationship to underfitting and overfitting then we are going to illustrate it or demonstrate it the bias variance trade-off graph we explain it that is the same graph you saw in the initial part this graph this is the bias variance trade-off uh, graph very important we are going to explain it along the line and then we summarize and discuss a few final notes so what is bias variance trade-off Bias variance trade-off is a concept in machine learning which refers to the problem of minimizing two error sources at the same time and this prevents the supervised learning algorithm from generalizing to accommodate inputs beyond the original data set. Alright, let's break this down. For, for the initial part, take note that we need to minimize two errors at the same time. These two errors are the bias error and the variance error. So we want to minimize it at the same time, but we prevent going too far so that it will uh, affect the algorithm. So the two error sources are the bias error and the variance error. We are going to minimize these two errors at the same time. So what is bias error? Now bias is an error from a faulty assumption in learning algorithm. Okay. This is such that when the bias is too large, the algorithm will be able the algorithm will be able to model the relationship between the features and the target variable. Actually, there is an error there. The, when the uh, when the bias is too large, the algorithm won't. Yeah, the algorithm won't be able to correctly model relationship between the features so that is when bias is too large all right so when variance is too uh, variance error results from fluctuation in the training data set okay a high variance value will cause the algorithm to capture most data points but will not be generalize and not to capture new data set. Let's just illustrate this. I'd like to make some drawings on the screen. So let's take for instance we have something like this. You have data points in this way. Okay so now if the bias is too large, then the algorithm won't be able to model the relationship. Maybe we can now have something like this. So in this way, you see the data points are not actually captured. So this is called underfitting, where the, the bias is too large. In this case, the algorithm does not capture or does not uh, model the relationship in the correct way. On the other hand, variance error is when the variance is too high. Okay, In this case, the algorithm will capture most of the data points but will not be able to model 
or capture new data sites. Let's illustrate in case of a high variance error. So in this case, the algorithm might be something like this. Capture all the data points. So in this case, in the case of two, uh, the bias being too large, we have we have underfitting, and in case of variance being too high, we have overfitting. So how do we adjust these two errors such that we don't get into overfitting or underfitting? In this case, we now have to talk about the decomposition of the squared error. So we need to know that the expected loss in the model is given by bias squared plus variance plus noise. So assuming that y output is equal to function of x representing the relationship between the two uh, the, the input variable and the training data set then f prime of x is an approximation which is actually the output from the algorithm f of x is the actual output f prime is the output from the algorithm so now we measure the squared error as y minus f prime of x so you see that f prime of x is the is the measured value and the actual is y so this is actual this is measured or the output from the algorithm so we want to keep this error uh, minimal we want to keep this error to be minimal so we know that y is also equal to f of x. Let's now decompose this error into bias, variance, noise, and other terms. So we have y minus f of x squared. The squared error is equal to bias squared, variance squared, sorry, variance plus the noise. This value represents the noise where we have that bias is equal to the output from the algorithm minus the actual value variance is given by the formula for variance this squared minus this all squared and then this represents the noise term in the equation so now what does the trade-off has to do the objective is to reduce this squared error to to the minimum to be able to reduce it, we are going to modify the terms of that equation. It means that we are going to either reduce the bias, reduce the variance, or reduce the noise, because these are the three terms in the equation. But we can only reduce either the bias or the variance. We cannot reduce the noise. Now, we cannot reduce the bias and the variance simultaneously. So the key word to take note of here is you can't reduce the both of them you can't reduce the both of them simultaneously because if you are reducing the bias the variance is increasing if you are reduce, increasing the variance the bias is reducing all right so let's now see the relationship between bias variance trade-off and overfitting or underfitting i've mentioned it before that if you are increasing the bias, it will lead to underfitting. On the other hand, if you are increasing the variance, it will lead to overfitting. Meanwhile, if you are increasing the bias, the variance for sure will be reducing. If you are also increasing the variance, the bias will be decreasing. So these are this kind of intricate, in, uh, completely intertwined relationship between these two, uh, these two concepts. If the model is too complex, meaning that there is too much variance, then it will pick up specific random features or noise from the example in the training data set. So when we illustrated it, we see that when the variance is too high, when the variance is too high, it's going to pick up everything. It's going to pick up everything, including even the noise in the data. Now, if the model is not complex enough, 
That is, there is no enough variance. It will miss out on important dynamics of the data set. But when the variance is too complex, it's called overfitting. But when the, 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 the model is not complex enough, this results to underfitting. Let's look at the graph now. Now pay attention to this graph because it's very very important. This is actually the graph, the main graph that highlights the bias variance trade-off uh, concept. Now the red line is for the bias, the blue is for the variance and the objective is to reduce this error to the minimum or to get it to come down. To get the error to come down, it means that you see, let's look at the bias force. Or let's look at the the variance force. It means that we need to reduce the variance. Remember that okay, we need to reduce the variance, of course, the variance has to come down okay and then along the line it comes to this point but as it's coming down the bias is going up and the error is going up at the same time so let's look at model complexity when the model complexity is increasing okay when the model complexity is increasing the bias is going down the error is reducing okay which is very fine at the point the more you reduce the model complexity okay the bias becomes at the point whereby the error starts increasing again so it means that there is a trade-off point somewhere where the error is at its minimum and that is where we have optimum model complexity so we have that the bias curve reduced error by reducing the bias value the variance curve increase variance <coughs> to improve the model. <coughs> so there is the variance curve. You move this way because you need to increase the variance so that the model is going to improve. But if you get to this point, you are going to stop because if you go any further, the error increases again. So this is how the bias variance uh, graph works. If it's not very clear to you, take some time to go through it and look at the explanation. Let's now look at an illustration of how it works in real. We have training data set, three training data sets that provide three models. These three models are based on the same algorithm, meaning that these three models are expected to perform the same way. So, good. So in the first model, we have model one, two, three. We pass in a value of X through these three models. We expect that these models provide the same output. But wow, this model provides a different output. This one provides a different output. This model provides a different output. What it means is that these models have become too specific that it is not able to, it's not generalized enough to handle a new input. This is a problem of overfitting. When the same algorithm provides different outputs for the same input. Now let's look at a different case where we pass in three data sets, three different data to a model of the same algorithm and these three data points it actually should be able to provide different output for each of them but for the three of them it just gives one single input meaning that this model is not able to model the relationship between this data the three uh, the input data and that is what is called underfitting so hope this has been informative for you uh, final notes relationship between the variance and model complexity is that as we increase the variance as we increase sorry as we increase the mod the variance the model complexity increases relationship of bias and model complexity as we increase the bias the model complexity 
reduces okay and so on so there are four of them I'd like to stop here and I'd like to uh, point out that if you have any question leave it for me in the description box if you want a more detailed explanation of this I could actually make it for you if you want but I actually like to keep my presentations very short please subscribe to my channel so that I'll make better videos next time remember my videos are free on uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning I'd like to thank you for viewing I remain Tyson the genius